Welcome back to the channel. Um, I always say this is at the beginning of every video, but if you have never subscribed, subscribe to the channel and like this video. My goal is to make this one of the world's largest um, resources to prepare for software engineering interviews. Okay, so what we have today is a binary tree problem. And the problem is all nodes K distance in a binary tree. So we're given three things. We're given a start node, the start node is right here. The start node is where we're going to start our search. And you'll see what I mean by search. We have our start node and then we have our root. We have the root of the tree. A reference to the root is given to us. We get a reference to the root. We get a reference to the start. And finally, we get a integer value called K. Or we could call it whatever we want. It's just an integer value. So what this problem asks of us is given K, return all of the nodes that are k distance away from the start node in this binary tree. So how do we go about solving this problem? So as you can see here, here is the start node. Our k is a value of two. So this level right here that you see, let me circle it. That level right there is level zero. So you see how this is just the start node. So what is level one? We step out, we see that is one step out. This is one step out. That is one step out. So what is level one? So what you see right now is level one. So what is the next level? We need to go two steps out from the start. So we have one, two, one, two, one, and then two. And notice how I'm going back, upwards and then down. This seems kind of odd for a binary tree and we'll work out why this causes problems and things like that later when we go through the thought process, but we need to just notice what our problem is asking of us. And now that we understand what K means, let's look at the second layer. Remember, we just did layer zero, layer one, and this is layer two. So do you see how these are layers coming off of the node? And now we know we can do layer three. Let's do layer three. And notice how the only node we added to the layer is this node. We go one, two, three. And do you see how that caps off layer three? And the only node that has not been put in a layer yet is the seven. The seven is going to be how many steps out? One, two, three, four, four steps out. So what we need to do is show that it is layer four. So let's circle the final layer. So you see these layers and this makes me think about something we talked about before. So the key is with these problems to use previous knowledge of previous problems and our data structure understandings to try to solve this problem. And let me ask you, what type of search does this remind you of and what data structure does this remind you of? Let's think back. It, it might not look like a tree. It might look like this. So what do you see here? Do you see a graph or do you see a tree? So what you see is actually both. You see an acyclic? Oh, okay. So we know our data structures and this looks like what we learned before, what I talked about before. This looks like a breadth for search. And if we remember our fundamentals of our data structures, we know a tree is a special kind of graph. A tree is an acyclic connected graph. So what we can do here is we can use our fundamentals. We can do breadth first search using a queue. And what we can do is we can search this like a graph, but we have a problem and let's investigate that problem right now. Okay. So whenever we're trying to solve one of these problems, okay. Our intuitions and our understandings of data structures and our fundamentals can only get us so far. What we need to understand is what are the barriers that we face when we're trying to apply what we already know to a problem that we're given. So you see a binary tree right here. What is the problem? If I do a search, try to do a breadth first search on this and I start at the five, what is the problem if I try to do breadth first search? I'm going to add the six to my queue. I'll add the two, but do you see how the three needs to be added to our breadth first search, but we can't add the three. What does this actually say? So what that is actually saying is that this is a directed graph. Yes, it is acyclic. Yes, it is connected, but this is directed downwards. This question is asking us, 
Can you search this as a graph? Can you do a breadth first search as a graph? How do we turn this into a graph? So we see the edges are directed. If we think on our data structures and we think, how do I create a mapping of sorts? How do I remember every node's parent and have constant time access to every node's parent? Because what is our problem? My problem is I can't go back upwards, right? I can't go back upwards here. That's our problem. How do we solve it? I need to know at this node, who is my parent? At this node, who is my parent? At this node, who is my parent? I need to know each node's parent. Like I was saying, how do we know that in constant time? So if we think on our data structures and immediately what I think of when I think of constant time access to a certain object of interest or a certain value, I think of our hash tables. I think of our hash tables because they give us that access immediately to an object of desire because of the nature of hashing and storing our keys. So what we can actually do here is we can run through every single node in the tree. We know how to do a tree traversal. We know in order, we know pre-order, we know post-order, we know our tree traversals. Why don't we check every node in the tree and create a hash table and we map the node to its parent. After we do that, why don't we execute a normal breadth first search just like we would have done before? So I just want to say the code is in the description. Um, I think the code can teach this just as well as I can, whichever one you learn from better. But I just want you to let you know that the code is in the description for this problem. If you want to see that first, watch this first either. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the original tree. We're going to build our hash table and we're going to be able to bounce from a node to its parent, from a parent to its node, whichever way we're going to turn this directed graph into an undirected graph by using our hash table to know the parent. And you'll see what I mean as we do this walkthrough. We're going to do a breadth first search with a Q. Okay, so now we have our original tree that we're going to search. And we have all that we need right here. We have a queue for a breath first search. Remember, a queue has first in, first out behavior. The behavior of the data structure we use for our search will change how the search happens. A queue will make it breath first search. A stack, whether it is our stack or the call stack, will make it a depth first search. We also have a scene hash table here. Why do we have that? We're going to be turning this into an undirected graph and we have the ability to go back on ourselves, back on our progress. If I start at five and I add the two to the first layer that we process and then I process two, two is going to add its left, add its right, but every node is going to also add its parent, but we already processed five. So that is why we need to have some hash table of sorts to remember what we've already worked on. So we also need to know the current level when the current level is equivalent to K. That is when we know all the nodes in our queue are on the level that we want. So we're going to see this right now. Our K is going to be two. So before we do anything, we need to turn this into an undirected graph. And we're going to technically do this by using our hash table and finding each node's parent so that we can traverse back to the parent. So we're not actually turning it to an undirected graph and touching the actual nodes, but we're creating mappings that let us treat the tree as if it were an undirected graph so we can go back upwards. So let's show that with arrows right now. Okay, so this is the state that our tree now sits in. So what we need to do next is begin our search. Okay, so let's begin our walkthrough. What we're going to do is we're going to add the first node to the queue and the scene hash table. And we're going to start with this node for the search. So what do we do? We first need to see, is this the level I want? It's not the level I want. I want level two. I'm on level zero. If we wanted level zero, what is in the queue? This is what we want. Level zero, which is the start node. But we still need to keep going. So what we need to do is we need to see what is the size of this layer. So that is the size of that layer. We will iterate and process this many nodes. Okay, so we're going to pull five from the queue. We're going to add its left, its right, and its parent. So we pull five from the queue. 
six. Has six been seen? It has not been seen. Add it to the queue, add it to the hash table. Two, has two been seen? No, it has not. Add it to the queue and add it to the hash table. And then we use our hash table to go back up and see the parent of five, which is three, and we're going to add three. Has it been seen? No, it has not been seen. Add three to the seen hash table that we have here and add it to the queue. Okay, and now we have processed the first layer. So what we can do is we can increment the layer number. Now we are working on layer one. And as you can see here, if K was one, which it is not here, we would just stop. If K was one, this is what we want. This is layer one, do you see? So this is one, this is one out, this is one out. They're all one hop out. These are the nodes we would want in layer one. So we do not stop because this is not the layer we want. We're on one, we want layer two. So we need to see what is the size of this layer? How many nodes do we need to process? So we see that we need to process three nodes. So we're going to iterate and process three nodes. So first off, I'm going to pull six from the queue and add its left child, its right child, and its parent. So six has no left child, six has no right child, and let's add its parent. But wait, we've already seen five. So we cannot add five. We can't go backwards in the search. So that is the point of the hash table, the scene hash table, so that we do not go backwards in our search. So what we do next is we pull the next item from the queue, number two or two. So we add two's left child, has seven been seen? It has not. And then we add its right child, has four been seen? No, it is not. And then we add its parent, five. Five has already been seen. We do not add that. And then we have the final node in the layer. The final node in the layer is three. So we're going to remove three and process it. So we're going to add three's left child. We've already seen five. We're not adding five. We're going to add three's right child. We've not seen one. Add it and add it to the queue. And we're going to add three's parent. Three has no parent, so we cannot add it to the queue. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see that this is going to be the next layer. This is going to be layer two. We can increment our current level. And what you see right here, this is layer two. And what does this look like? So do you see how the four is two hops out? The seven is two hops out. The one is two hops out. One, two. One, two. One and two. And notice the six is one, that's one hop out. And notice the three is one, one hop out. And notice the two is one hop out. So what we see here is we want layer two. K equals the current level. And we want to return this, what the queue is holding. The queue is holding the second level. We're going out level by level because this is a breadth first graph search. This is our answer. This is what we return, and that is how this problem can be done. This is one approach to this problem that I wanted to share and explain. So now let's look at the time and space complexity for this solution. All right, so what we have for our time complexity is gonna be m squared plus n squared. Wait, wait, yo, Ben, 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 Yeah, ben. yeah, what's, what's up? Ben, bro. Oh, Ishan. Come on now, okay. come on now, homie. Yeah, wait, wait, I think, I think you should explain this instead of me. All right guys, so as we know, in a breadth first search, our time complexity is always gonna be the number of edges plus the number of nodes. Here, n plus n. But we know something in particular about a tree, which is that the number of edges is always gonna be one less than the number of nodes. Once again, the number of edges is always gonna be one less than the number of nodes. Let's take a look at an example to see why this is the case. So, in this tree that we've drawn out, the number of nodes is nine, and the number of edges is eight. And this is always gonna be the case because whenever you add a new node into a binary tree, you're adding one extra edge to connect that node. So the number of edges is always gonna be one less than the number of nodes. It's always gonna be m is n minus one. So if we go back to our time complexity, we can essentially replace this m with n minus one. And if we're doing n minus one here, as we know in big O notation, we don't care about constants. So this whole thing can just be rewritten as big O of n. So that's how we get the time complexity. Moving on to the space complexity, the hash map can only store a total of n potential nodes within the tree. And we also know that the priority queue is upper bounded by the number of nodes as well. So 
Our space complexity is, again, bounded by big O of n. Alright guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode. Alright, I am sorry the show just got hijacked there. But, yeah, that is all for this problem that is... That is all for today's video. So if you like this video, if this was a clear explanation like this video, subscribe to the channel. My goal, again, is to make this a very exhaustive and helpful resource for people preparing for software engineering interviews. So that's basically what it's all about. So... Yeah. Game game? No. <laughs> no. <laughs>